or uh, this season under the spotlight. That game against Halliday and then against the Red Sox last Friday night. Eight is enough as far as the Yankees are concerned. This is the eighth straight pitcher that they faced for the first time ever. No one has ever had an at bat against Kawakami. And Chamberlain in the first inning, sometimes a rough inning for him. He has an ERA around eight in the first inning. We'll keep an eye on that tonight to see if he has any trouble in the first inning at Turner Field. Here's the starting lineup for Joe Girardi tonight. A little different from last night. Yankees struggling to score some runs. So Johnny Damon's been inserted into the lineup. He'll be followed by Mark Teixeira and a struggling Alex Rodriguez, who's one for his last 22 and nine for his last 63. Cano, Swisher, Gardner follow him. Francisco Cervelli gets a start behind the plate after four strikeouts from Posada last night. And Java Chamberlain, the pitcher, bats ninth. And here is Kawakami, 34 years old now, 5'11", 200 pounds, a 4-6 and six record. It's his 14th start, 75 innings, 59 strikeouts, 8 home runs allowed. He's given up an average of 261 against him. Keep in mind, too, that on four days rest, normal in a five-man rotation, his ERA is almost six. He had five full days rest against the Red Sox the other day. His ERA in those starts, 3.09, and he's working on four days rest today. There's defense behind him tonight. Same lineup as last night. Anderson, McLeod, and Fran Coor in the outfield from left to right. Around the horn, third to first. Jones, Escobar, Johnson, and Kochman. And Brian McCann doing the catching. Umpires for this series and working tonight behind the plate will be James Hoy. Bill Welke is at first base. Jim Reynolds at second and Bill's brother Tim works at third. He is the crew chief and Derek Jeter set to lead things off Chip. And Joe he had a milestone hit last night in the third inning a double in the ball game. Moved him past Babe Ruth on the all time Yankees doubles list. Jeter there by himself now number four. Number two hitting 301 for Joe Girardi's club here in 2009. Big crowd still filing in. What with a busy sports night here in Atlanta. And Jeter hits the first pitch of the game into moderately deep right field. And it's one pitch and one man out. This is a Yankee club that is not clicking at all offensively right now. They have scored 13 runs in their last six games. And because of those extended offensive doldrums this month, they have lost six games in the standings to the Red Sox in 22 days. They, they were a game up. They're five back tonight. They have not faced a pitcher that they know since they beat Santana the other day. Eight and straight against strangers. And that makes it tough. Plus, uh, with the huge advantage, I think, that the National League clubs have playing American League teams in their home parks. Makes life even more difficult for this Yankee club. Johnny Damon played in last night's game, walked as a pinch hitter and was taken out. He's had a sore calf. But in there tonight, down a quick strike. And he too pops it in the air to right. Jeff Francoeur got a good jump. Two outs on three pitches. That'll help Kawakami, who as you said, Joe, has been much better with an extra day of rest. Maybe he'll have an easy time early tonight. Well, let's hope so. And cut down on his pitch count. The only runs he gave up in Boston last Friday night came on a two run homer by Jason Bay but otherwise he pitched outstanding and out dueled Dice K. He possesses a lot of pitches but none that approach the quality as far as all four pitches that Vasquez has Javier Vasquez but on any given night his stuff's pretty good and he really used his fastball well in Boston the other night I think that's what set everything else up. He knows how to pitch. Yes he does. Yeah, He's a rookie in this league but he's a veteran pitcher and Nine straight games, he's allowed three earned runs or less. And he pumps over a quick strike to Mark Teixeira, who went 0 for 3 last night. 20 homers, 56 for Teixeira, and a 282 Yankee batting average. That's pretty consistent right there. One of those games was a five inning stint because he had a, a 4 2 lead. Bobby took him out. The bullpen couldn't hold it in Baltimore. That's the first pitch of the night out of the strike zone for Kawakami. And Teixeira behind one ball and two strikes. Teixeira, by the way, has taken over the 
American League voting lead for the All-Star game at first base by a scant 35,000 votes over Kevin Euclid of the Red Sox. And still a week and a half or so of voting left. And so like this American League Eastern Division race that all-star game battle should be a very tight one down to the very finish something tells me they'll both make it I would think there's probably a pretty good chance I'm not sure which one will start but I think they'll both be on there so that over in the home run at bats for mark that's over nine games base is clear in a one two pitch to count. After that rough April, since his first start in May on May 5th, he has an ERA since then of 3.35. Very good. And very good is the way you describe a nine pitch first inning. Seven of those pitches were for strikes, and the Yankees are out in order one, two, and three. First, here's Bobby Cox's lineup tonight for the Atlanta Braves. Same as last night. Cloud, Escobar, and Chipper Jones at the top of the order. Escobar, last four games, eight for 18, not too shabby. McCann will be the cleanup hitter, followed by the guy we featured in our pregame comments, Garrett Anderson. Kochman, Frankfur, Johnson, and Kawakami round out the order against Java Chamberlain, great big horse of a guy from Lincoln, Nebraska. And a former Cornhusker. 6'2, 230. He's 23 years old. On the road this year in six starts. He's 3 0 with a 272 ERA. And he gets a ton of runs to work with, too, averaging just under five runs per game per start. And again, the first okay. inning problems. 12 of the 33 runs he's allowed this year have come in the first inning. And Nate McLeod is the only Brave that's ever faced right. Jabba Chamberlain. And he's 0 for 3 against him in his major league career. McLeod 0 for 4 in the game last night for Atlanta. Struck out once and could not get the ball out of the infield his other three trips. Right. No. And that went in at the knees to even the count. There's no mistaking the stuff of Jabba Chamberlain. He has an overpowering fastball. You mentioned the slider that he can throw. The question some in baseball still have is which role is Jabba Chamberlain best suited? Starting or pitching out of the bullpen? McCoff retired. He's 0 for 5 in the series, one away. He's still working on a, an off speed pitch, and that's still a work in progress. His defense tonight Damon Gardner and Swisher in the outfield. Never thought I'd say that about the Yankees. Rodriguez, Jeter, Cano, and Teixeira on the infield third to first, and Francisco Cervelli, the catcher. Damon, Gardner, and Swisher. Yeah, it's not exactly DiMaggio, Mantle, and no. Barra. No. But that's who they send out there tonight 
as Escobar is the hitter against Chamberlain. And on, Java game. pumps in a quick strike. If you look at Chamberlain, and just ask it from a mathematical standpoint. As a starting pitcher, he can impact a game 30 times. Out of the pen, he can pitch twice that many, if not more. Fly ball, hit to right. And that's in play for Swisher, and he's there. And two men are out. Yeah, but some of that goes to need, Chip, and their bullpen's pretty strong. The way we saw Philip Hughes work last night, that was mighty impressive as a so called setup man. And their bullpen's pretty strong. They needed some depth in their rotation after the signing, of course, of Sabathia and Burnett. That helped a lot. But uh, Joe Girardi feels like his biggest asset to the team is as a starter for right now. And here he is in his 14th assignment for the Yankees. Hasn't won since June the 1st at Cleveland. He's got a good fastball working tonight. Around 92 93. And the pen, he could pump it up to 97. Right. Ball two. He's a good hard slider. If he's going to be in the rotation, though, Chip, he's going to have to develop a third pitch. Fastball and slider won't be enough as a starter. I think about how tough it is to learn how to start in the division in which he plays. He played Toronto, Baltimore, the Red Sox. Man. Some big time offensive clubs. Even that Oriole team, as the Braves saw at uh, Camden Yards, a lot of young offensive talent. And his home ballpark certainly doesn't help either. No. No, that was an attempt at an off speed pitch there. I'm not sure what it was, but nowhere near the zone. The ALE standings up to date. Yeah, Chipper rolls one foul pass right, to Shara. And the count's full three balls and two strikes. That Toronto team's interesting because they got off that great start, then went through a spell where they couldn't beat anyone, came into Atlanta, in fact, got swept. But they seem to have weathered the storm and they're playing better baseball again, and in fact, have moved into a virtual tie with the Yankees for second. I pop fly off Chipper's bad foul. He was 0 for 3, but scored a run last night. As he takes aim at 23 year old Jabba Chamberlain, born and raised in Lincoln, Nebraska. Ground ball to Shara dives to his right. Chamberlain has to hurry, and he gets to the bag. Gold Glove caliber play from Mark Teixeira at first to Rob Chipper Jones and a scoreless first under our belts. It's the Braves and Yankees game two here in Atlanta. On it. It's a good night for that. 
Badge, it's time for the know-how question of the game built by the Home Depot. If you have a question, send us an email, and if chosen, we'll answer it later in the game. Send your email to braves at peachtreetv.com, and please tell us your name and where you're from. And remember, more saving, more doing. That's the power of Home Depot. You're killing the corn dogs today before the game. I noticed that. Well, Wayne Berry, I mean, I walk in the press room today, and Wayne Berry's greeting me with a corn dog. Thank you, Wayne. He is so focused on getting the shot of Alex Rodriguez that Wayne can look up and say, no. hi, Joe. No, he's on he's under he the is. gun. There he goes. He's All got right. to stand focus. He did that one one-handed. Here, here's A-Rod. It's always fun to read the tabloids in New York. One of the lead paragraphs or lead lines on the Yankee game story last night were the following words. Two, period. O, oh, period. Seven, period. Next paragraph. That's what Alex Rodriguez is hitting for the Yankees as they lost 4 nothing to the Braves, blah, 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 last night. He does not look at all comfortable. Did not look very good defensively at times last night. And not coincidentally, as he struggles, so struggles the Yankee attack. What I noticed last night, you saw a good case of it there. What looked like a split finger pitch was his chasing some bad pitches early in the count. Something you're not used to seeing him doing and a real lack of bat speed. Could that be a problem of that hip? Could be. It, it very well could be. Missed a lot of time nursing that and trying to get back 100% healthy, but if he's not able to really turn on his back leg because of the hip, that could cost him some bat speed. Oh. That just missed full count to Alex Rodriguez, who will get a day off a week, Joe Girardi said, the rest of the way in the first half of the season. Uh-oh, Andrew. And Andrew and the Rangers struggling mightily with the bats. And a line drive into right center field. McLeod on his horse makes the basket catch. The ball was hit pretty well by A-Rod, but McLeod tracked it down for the first out of the second inning. It started slicing a little bit, but not like it could have hit to this part of the ballpark with Nate playing him a little toward left center. He had a little ways to go. Been able to get there about knee high. Nice play. It's a little bit like Tommy Hansen's start last night. Three of his first four outs were fly ball outs. And the first man that reached against Hansen is the man in the batter's box. That's Robinson Cano. He was hit by a pitch. And the main difference between Tommy tonight and Kawakami, Tommy last night and Kawakami tonight, very efficient pitch counts for Kenshin so far. Hansen threw 10 first inning pitches last night. Kawakami did him one better in the first tonight. And as we saw last night, that heat and humidity began to take its toll on. Hansen because he was out there for some long stretches even though he didn't give up. 3 and 0 oh for the kid. I asked oh. Roger before the game, give me a grade for Hansen last night. He said, "Well, obviously command probably a D." <laughs> he said, uh, "Poise and ability to get out of trouble, A+." Plus. Did that all night. Yankees left 11 men on base. And he thought overall, Tommy, if he were the high school principal, would have given him a B for his performance last night. Well, I've heard Rogers say that when asked to compare Tommy to anyone he was around as a player, and he said with respect to the hype and the fanfare coming to the big leagues, probably Dwight Gooden. Really? Yeah. And he said, I'm not sure that I'm ready to put him in Dwight Gooden's category just yet because of the success that Doc enjoyed his first two years, but that was a nice comparison. Lined out of play down the left field line, and I guess what's so exciting about Hanson is besides the, the raw stuff and the unflappability that you spoke of last night, what I was excited by was he knows how to get himself out of jams. And we, we touched on it briefly last night. So few young pitchers today are allowed that luxury in the minor leagues for pitch counts and myriad other reasons. Well, it's really refreshing to see a kid come up here and 
be able to wiggle off the hook a time or two. Cano to left. Two out. And obviously you hope for Hanson. He'll make it easier on himself and harness that command so it won't be such a struggle through five for him. Well, he said he knows what he's doing wrong and he's just got to slow down a little bit. And you can understand how he can be a little amped up, as they say. It's only going to get better from my vantage point. And it's pretty good right now the way things are going. So big red. Three and oh, Tommy Hanson. And Kawakami set down five in a row for Nick Swisher. You mentioned the little bit of a change for the Yankees lineup. Swisher last night hit second and go for five. Tonight hitting sixth for New York. As Melky Cabrera and Jorge Posada both slumping mightily getting game two off oh. in a starting assignment. Very difficult for you as an offensive player player as a hitter to try to adjust every night to somebody new that just right now it's a chronic problem for the Yankees and to that end your first time through you're trying to see some pitches as many as you can you want to see the ball out of a stranger's hand what's he got how does the breaking ball break what tilt and it's not until your second time through the order generally where you've got a good feel for how a guy likes to work so that's a definite advantage for a guy like Kawakami and like Hanson last night. Well, they won't have that advantage tomorrow because Derek Lowe's pitching. Yes, and, and the, the only way you really do them a favor is by walking people. Or in the case last night, Hanson hit Cano and got something going in the second inning. So don't do them any favors. Make them swing the bat, throw some strike ones in there and uh, on the first pitch and put them on the defensive a little bit where they've got to protect the plate some. Slow curve hit a mile high in the air left center field that ball tailing away from McLeod and he caught up to it. What a play. I didn't think Joey had a chance. Never took his eye off of it, Chip. He's beginning to learn his space here at Turner Field. Great play. Now it's time to take a look at the SunTrust Solid Performer brought to you by SunTrust. Live solid, bank solid. Tonight, the highest National League batting averages against right-handed pitchers. Entering tonight's game, how about Brian McCann at the top of the order? 361 is his average, not too shabby. He got some good company there, too, with Albert Pujols down there in fifth place at 337. That's your SunTrust Solid Performer. And lo and behold, Who's leading off, Chip? Wow, it's almost Kafkaesque. Brian McCann starts things off. Having a little bit of a crisis here. I understand. We have these little telex earpiece thingies. 
so that Glenn can talk to us during our open. Yeah. Mine is stuck between our peach tree signage board and the facade of the upper deck. Uh oh. I need a kid. stick and some duct tape. Otherwise, I don't know if I can continue. I'll be so distracted. I'm riddled with ADD. See, it's right down there, right in the sign. Yeah, right behind it. It's right behind the R in Peach Tree. By the way, that last pitch was low ball Thanks. too. I'm telling you, I'm very <laughs> upset about this. We'll get somebody on it. Dave Poole will be up here in a minute with a hanger and a piece of bubble gum. <sighs> Nervous about this. It's my favorite earpiece. 2-0 -oh count. It's Rip, a lucky get. earpiece. I think the Braves have lost since I've worn that earpiece. Well, we had it a day. Well, as long as it's not your mouthpiece. <laughs> nice. Two balls, two strikes. Come on, Mac. What a night Brian had last night. Three hits. All right. Including a big back breaking home run in the eighth inning of game one of the series. First homer allowed this year by Robertson, and it was smacked. That ball was smacked too. Four hits and five trips in the series for Brian McCann and Java Chamberlain to the stretch for the first time tonight. Start calling him Brian Smackan. Ball's jumping off his bat. Chance for either Cano or to share us. Share made the good play on Chipper to rob him of a hit in the first inning. <laughs> Something made Tex laugh. On, Andy. Here's Garrett Anderson. Five game hitting streak for him, nine for 18 in that stretch. And a big hole for him to shoot one through if he can. Rip it. Look it. And that's pulled foul past to share. I wonder if Brian said, hey, Tex, nice range. <laughs> Might have. Mark Desira had some nice comments about everybody involved in his stay in Atlanta, ranging from Bobby Cox to his teammates and how he still enjoys all those people's company and would go to dinner with them, play golf with them, whatever in the offseason. Boy. And as we said last night, look, Mark made a business decision. He was traded here. He was traded from here. And uh, the Braves never entered into the bidding for his services because the price tag for Teixeira's services was well out of reach for them. Mm -hmm. And it really was an opportunity for him to either stay in Anaheim. He loved living in Southern California. The Hi, idea Andy. of the Red Sox intrigued him. But his agent, Scott Boris, said, look, there may not be any other better place for you than to play for the Yankees. And that's where he ended up. Fly ball well struck into center field. Gardner back on the track and has just enough room. That ball was smacked as well, but right at Gardner at the center field fence. That ball seemed to carry too, didn't it? Very little win tonight, if any, but another high fastball that Garrett can hit anybody's high fastball. I'm convinced of that. And you see Gardner feeling for the fence. That's how close he was. He pulls that a little bit. Somebody once said, Braves are in business. Come on, cut. Casey Kochman one on one out. Cervelli snap throw back to first and just back was Brian McCann. The Yankees do like the arm of Francisco Cervelli behind the plate. And he's thrown out 10 of 16 base dealers so far. Another one of those terrific catchers out of Venezuela. By the way, the Venezuelan 
national soccer team and the Mexican national soccer team are playing tonight in the Georgia Dome. They're expecting 50,000 people there. They rolled outside on the Georgia Dome just for that occasion. Okay. And congratulations to the U.S. soccer team. How about that upset? Where's Al Michaels with Do You Believe in Miracles? They beat Spain today two to nothing in one of the biggest upsets in the history of soccer. One ball, one strike. Yeah, I guess that's a, that's a World Cup Bring qualifying it. tournament, I, I think. I, I don't know. I, if it is, they're looking pretty good. Spain's the number one team in the world. They've won 35 straight matches. Great stuff, though, for the U.S. lads. Right. A high ball, two, two balls, two strikes. Yeah, a lot of guys on the crew that were fired up about the happenings at the soccer match today. Guys were running around downstairs on their way back and forth to the truck. Yeah, hey, we beat Spain. I said, in what? <laughs> I didn't even know they were playing. That's right. That's very cool. Popped up left side. A-Rod gives chase. A lot of foul ground here at the Ted. And Kochman pops out. McCann still at first for Jeff Francoeur. Might see a lot of that tonight against Chamberlain. Being able to run his fastball. Cut his fastball in on some left-handers' hands. Cause some pop-ups. Let's see if this was a fastball. Yeah, and it was up a little bit too. We saw Garrett get on top of one about that height in case he couldn't. It's funny how baseball signings have ramifications, not at the time of the signing necessarily, but two, three, four years Boy. down the road. I mentioned the job of Chamberlain was a compensation pick in the amateur draft. He was a compensation pick for the Philadelphia Phillies signing Flash Gordon. How do you think the Phillies would like to have a guy like Jabba Chamberlain to plug in their rotation right now? As Jeff on his front foot pops that up into the center of the diamond, Teixeira climbs the pitcher's mound and makes the play. Jabba Chamberlain gives up a leadoff hit to Brian McCann and nothing else in a scoreless second inning. On hospital injury report for the Atlanta Braves. These guys still on the disabled list, as we have been telling you. Buddy Carlisle nearing a return, and I would say that uh, 
Greg Norton is close too. He played in a game for Gwinnett last night. Had a triple, drove in a run, scored one. So he's on a rehab assignment. Don't forget you can get the perfect balance of health and care at Piedmont Hospital, the preferred health care provider of the Atlanta Braves. Visit PiedmontHospital.org. Anytime Greg Norton legs out a triple, you know the ankle's feeling good. Do they have fences there? I don't think so. Equinet? If it, if it had a pigsty out beyond the fence and the ball had been eaten by a pig, he would have had a chance for an inside the pork homer. I might be sick. <laughs> <laughs> Kalima just said, yeah, I heard him. Too bad you didn't lose your mouthpiece. I heard him. <laughs> as soon as I said it, I said, why am I doing this? But it happens pretty much every day. Brett Gardner, the hitter. That was nice. Kawakami's retired six in a row. <laughs> I asked for it. I don't blame him. Gardner at 285, a couple of home runs, 11 batted in. The Yankees also activated Cody Ransom before the game today. He's been out with a strained right quadriceps. And he injured at the end of April. And a ground ball to second. He can't waste any time with Gardner flying down the line. Seven up, seven down for the Yankees with one out in the third inning now. Yeah, especially when a ball, you're charging it hard, knowing you're going to have to make a quick play on him, and the ball hits the lip of the grass and kind of shoots it low. Sometimes can throw your balance off a little bit, but a good play by Kelly. Well, here's Cervelli. He was involved in a play in spring training last year that I think really served notice that the Tampa Bay Rays were going to be a much different ball club in 2008. He had a broken right wrist in a home plate collision with Elliot Johnson on March the 8th at then Legends Field. That's now George Steinbrenner Field in Tampa. And was on the DL until mid June for the Yankees minor league club. And that was a play that really drew the ire of Joe Girardi, almost questioning why the Rays were playing so hard in a spring training game. And you hate to see a guy get hurt, but it wasn't a dirty play. It was just a hard baseball play in the spring. And the Rays really gained a whole lot of momentum, as if to say to the Yankees, you're not pushing us around anymore. A fly ball to right. Frank Coor has been busy. Eight in a row retired. And then I believe Shelly Duncan of the Yankees slid in hard, took out Iwamura Correct. in an exhibition game. Johnny, who was it that came in from right field? Johnny Gomes. Gomes came yeah. in and the fight was on. Well, let's see what kind of hitter job a Chamberlain is. Very limited sample. A big guy with a bat in his hand, you never know. Yankees have retired so many numbers. They've got guys wearing numbers in the 60s and 70s. It's kind of ugly. Well, you know, Jeter's going to go. I mean, number two is going to be retired when he's done. What do you think for the Yankees? Right? Well, probably. I'm just. Right now, your, your opportunities are limited. If you've got a favorite number, chances are it's already gone. And hanging out in Monument Grove somewhere. You better think of a multiple of that number. Yeah. If you have any shot. Billy Martin's number one. Ruth Gehrig. Gone. And on and on you go. Number eight's been retired twice. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking, you know, you think about it as a kid. You want to be like uh, your hero, wear his number or something. You get, come to the big leagues and you're wearing 62. Just, there's just a little luster jumps off of that, you know? Well, maybe he'll make that number famous, John well, Chamberlain. In Japan, they wear high numbers, crazy high numbers. Not a big deal, kind of a custom over there, but in the major leagues, usually 59 was about as high as any number would go. Well, if you, if you want one through 10 for the Yankees, your best shot is number six. One's gone three, four, five, seven, eight twice. Maris nine, Phil Rizzuto ten. And back off Kawakami to short. Escobar's got it. Let's see if Ken Sheen is all right. He's on two knees as that ball appeared to clip him on the side of the neck. On its way out to shortstop. That's a 1-6-3 put out. 
Kawakami was rattled. Put the glove up, but the glove missed. Good grief. See every hit, pitch, and run in beautiful high definition. Peachtree TV and HD can be found on Comcast Channel 802, Charter Channel 707, and Direct TV Channel 17. Check your local listing for other cable systems. The Braves play here in HD on Peachtree TV. No score, bottom of the third inning, but a scary moment there to end the top of the third. On a line drive off the bat of the pitcher. It appeared to hit Kenshin Kawakami in the side of the neck. It got past the glove and ricocheted to Escobar, who made the play. He put his glove up to try to defend him, but oh my, well, that's like right in the collarbone and neck area. Scary stuff here. Man, oh man. Chris Medlin is loosening up for the Braves in the bullpen. There's Chris. And we'll see if uh, Ken Sheen can continue on in tonight's ball game. We're in the third inning time for our AirTran Airways home run. Inning. One lucky fan will have a chance to win free airfare for two. If Atlanta hits a home run this inning, visit PeachtreeTV.com slash Braves. For the official rules and enter for your chance to win, AirTran Airways go. There's nothing stopping you. Java Chamberlain had a similar fate strike him in a game against Baltimore on May 21st. Second batter of the ball game, Adam Jones lined one off his right knee, had to come out of the game, but X-rays were negative and he didn't miss a start. I'll tell you how hard that ball was hit. After it hit Kawakami, look how far it went. Mm -hmm. Jabba Chamberlain centered up that baseball, and Kawakami lucky not to have been more seriously hurt. He got the glove up, but just missed the ball. And the play was officially scored 1 6 3 to retire the Yankees here in the third. Johnson, the pitcher's spot. And then the top of the order. And uh, Kawakami is not in the on deck circle for Atlanta. One more angle to show you how far the ball ricocheted. One hopper to, you know, Diori Hernandez is out on deck. What a shame. Back to Java Chamberlain. Hernandez will be announced, and that's it for Kawakami.
three perfect innings for the Braves starter tonight. And again pitching lights out in the spotlight. Yeah, against the East now that's 22 innings 12 hits four runs six walks and 16 strikeouts. Or Kawakami in 2009. So would Medlin count as another guy they've never faced. Sure. No, not as a starting not assignment. A starter yeah. Chris hasn't pitched in a while too. He had that long stint in relief in Baltimore but it's been a while. And as Bobby said it. Good ball, kid. He's got to find a spot or two for him just to get some work in but because the starters have been pitching so deep into ball games, there wasn't a space to try to get Chris any innings in and he's the designated long guy if you will. Well his roommate in Gwinnett Tommy Hansen picked up a win last night. Maybe Medlin can turn the trick tonight. In game two of the series two balls no strikes right. now two and one. To Diori Hernandez. Come on, Dave. Talked with Omar and Fonte before the game tonight. He's got the cast off of his hand. That's good news. And he's able to grip the bat with relatively good strength he said. Still another week away before he'll start taking uh, swings off a tee. And he's hopeful of coming back right after the All Star break. That would be his optimal timetable. That'll be a good shot in the arm for the Braves to get him back. Little ground ball hit toward Cano at second. Hernandez retired five in a row by Chamberlain Nate McClough already an impact in this game with a couple of fine running catches in center field. To his left, he rubbed a rod of a base hit, and then on this great play to end the second inning, took an extra base hit away from Nick Swisher, covering a lot of ground tonight. And he's going to cover some ground with a gap shot here in the third inning. Gardner will play that on a hop. Gardner plays deep for a guy who's a center fielder and with his kind of speed. He is way out there. But playing deep here prevented a triple. Much deeper than Nate McLeod plays. Braves last night got three runs after two were out in the third inning. Remember Escobar singled, stole second, went to third on a throwing error by Posada, and then Chipper walked. Back to back doubles by McCann and Anderson and he had three runs. I didn't have a chance to talk to Terry Pendleton before tonight's game but if you have does he have an explanation as to why the Braves have been so much better this year driving in runs with two outs as opposed to none or one so far. No he doesn't. I, I did ask him in a, a bit of a related question about doing the little things so well lately which I guess you could apply that to the Clutch two out hitting. And his answer was really kind of simple. He said, well, What's game. taken them so long? You know, almost like, yeah. you know, we've been preaching that since day one, and now they're beginning to get it. And I said, Well, maybe because some of the little things they're doing now are leading to wins. They're solely responsible for some wins. And he said, Yeah, but why should, did it have to take that long? Big swing and a miss by Escobar. That's that wicked job of Chamberlain's slider. It's 0-2. Most hitting coaches will tell you they they like their hair and they don't like it gray. Why make it tough on them or yourselves, right? Yeah, that's why Terry just shaved his head. Big lead by McClough at second. At first the 0 2 pitch 
Line drive right field, but Swisher is coming on, and he makes the play. Braves have two hits. They've left two men stranded through three, and no winner in our Air Tran Airways home run inning of tonight's game. We invite you to register at PeachtreeTV.com slash Braves for the official rules and your chance to win. and the Yankees. Braves. Yankees. Thursday at 7 on Peachtree TV. We go to the fourth inning. Here's tonight's Toyota Tacoma trivia question. With the Toyota Tacoma delivering that question for us tonight. How many years were there? Two All-Star games. That's true. They used to have two All-Star games during the summer. How many years did they conduct that all-star situation? Yeah, the first all-star game was in the mid-1930s, if I'm not mistaken. 33. 33, and it was a the brainchild of a sports writer in Chicago by the name of Arch Ward. First one was played at Old Comiskey Park. Just think if we had two all-star games now and the winner had to determine the Game seven of the World Series and they split. That'd be justice. <laughs> Here's Chris Medlin. Two wins, two losses. And now on with the top of the Yankee order and Derek Jeter. In this fourth inning, the Yankees watched all the video of Kawakami, saw him one time through the lineup. Now they get a look at Chris Medlin, who's going to try to continue that impressive stretch. Got to figure he's going to be a little erratic with his command because it's been a while since he pitched. Ten days ago in Baltimore, four innings, six hits, five walks, four runs. Off the left side of the mound, and that helped Escobar, who has to double clutch. And Medlin gets Jeter. Ten I, in a row. I've just always loved the way Yunel keeps his glove low when he's going to the baseball. Watch his glove here. After it skips off the mound, his glove is down, and it stays down. He doesn't carry it with him up waist high as he's moving to his left and then stab at the ball. Watch it. See how low his glove was before the ball even got to the dirt. And then it's in a good spot to just really get in the way of the baseball. Nice hands. And Johnny Damon bats and takes a fastball upstairs from Chris. One ball and no strikes. Yankees are going so badly on offense right now that one of their writers has dubbed them the Dead Bats Society. They're just in a real team-wide funk. 
11 in a row to start the game. Two outs. Well, the Braves are catching them at the right time then. I don't like. I'm sure those New York Riders could care less about how it impacts the Atlanta Braves with respect to the dead bat society, but some of that's due to some good pitching. That's exactly right. When you go into Marlins territory and face that staff, yeah, they're unheralded, and yes, at the time, the Marlins were under 500, but they've got some big-time power arms down there. The Braves in this series have pitched the Yankees extremely tough so far. One guy I read wrote that they've lost they lost two out of three at home to Washington lost two out of three to Florida down there got shut out yesterday that they were losing to what amounted to the dregs of the National League East now the Braves can read too, you know and they've retired 12 in a row to start the game 22 straight scoreless innings and we move to the bottom of the fourth inning still scoreless. Inning time for the answer to tonight's Toyota Tacoma trivia question. How many years did MLB have two All Star games? I'm going to say five. I think it might have been more than that. Really? Okay. You can have more. Okay. You can I've have got the field, in other words. Oh! Okay, that was close. For a very obscure question. Fifty nine games were played in Pittsburgh and Los Angeles. Nineteen sixty, they were played in Kansas City and New York at Yankee Stadium. Sixty one, San Francisco and Boston. Sixty two, Washington and Wrigley Field. Let's see what the split was. One and one the first year. 2 and 0 for the National League in the second year. Uh oh. Uh oh. 1961. National League won in 10 innings, and then in the second game at Boston, rain. Uh oh. A tie game, a 1 1 tie called after nine innings. Mm. Precedent. Yes. Two balls and a strike Boy. to Chipper. That's down low. Three. One new count. First All Star game, July 6th, 1933, at Comiskey Park. It coincided with the celebration of Chicago's Century of Progress Exposition. And that one back through the box. Chipper aboard, leading off the fourth inning. That's a good sign because the Braves are last in the National League in batting average, leading off an inning. Last, dead last. They're only hitting 241. This base hit will help that number. Went down and got a low fastball. So you're right, the first.
first All Star game, 1933 at Comiskey Park. Second game in 34 at the Polo Grounds, 1935 at Municipal Stadium. The first National League win in the All Star game came at Braves Field in Boston, 1936. National League by a final of four to three. The first Yankee Stadium All Star game was 1939. July the 11th. Brian smoked one through the hole on the right side his first time up. And now with Teixeira holding Chipper on, he's got a bigger hole to shoot for. If he gets something he can turn on. Come on well, he's not afraid to straighten up the lefties, is he? No, and he's hit nine batters this year. That'll give you an indication of how aggressive he can be. Wonder how many of those were Kevin Euclid, who seems to get buzzed two or three times a game whenever the Red Sox and Yankees match up with Chamberlain on the mound. Yeah, I wonder what that's all about. Maybe he just doesn't like skyline chili. One one count. From Cincinnati, of course. And as we told you, neck and neck with Teixeira for the All Star starting nod for the American League at first base. Speaking of neck and neck, we'll let you know as soon as yeah. we hear something on Kawakami after getting struck by a line drive from Chamberlain. And we're not speculating on. Hit the results of that, but it appeared to hit him up on the neck, maybe even up near the jaw. Boy. Come on, Mac. He can be wild. He's walked 37 and 69 innings coming into play tonight. No walks this evening. But he can pitch behind in the count. He's got good Come enough back. stuff to survive that in most cases with that 94 95 fastball at times. I'll be interested to see where the drop off is. What number we start to see a little less zip on that fastball and maybe a little looseness or loopiness maybe with that breaking ball. He's still throwing very hard in the mid 90s at 52 pitches. Remember, he is more a relief pitcher being stretched out to start. As that one yanked foul into the stands. Two balls, two strikes. His longest. Uh, not as long as doubting the most pitches he's thrown in a start this year is 108. He's done that twice and he's thrown right on 100 each of his last three. Going six innings four innings and six innings against the Mets 100 pitches in four innings walk five. How about that swing you almost never see Brian McCann fooled that badly. Tip your cap to Jabba Chamberlain. That was just a dirty pitch. One out. It's definitely a slider, but really looked like one he kind of pulled the string on, like he didn't throw it as hard as his normal slider. And Brian couldn't stay back, got fooled badly, and that is a rare instance for him. First strikeout for Chamberlain tonight. That helps keep your pitch count down, doesn't it? Here's Anderson who lined to the center field fence at the 400 mark and was retired in the Braves second. Garrett doing for Atlanta what he was brought here to do be a productive, run producing bat in the middle of this Braves attack. He's it safely in 29 of 35 games now. Has that average up to 282? Well, oh, he's really changing up with that slider. Yeah, isn't he? yeah, and McCann and Anderson both really fool way out in front on that pitch. Remember John Lieber? Yes. When he won 20 games with the Cubs one year, Randy Hundley was talking to him because Lieber had the same kind of problem that Chamberlain did. Everything he threw was hard, hard fastball, hard slider, and he didn't have that third pitch to get them off his breaking ball. 
the game. And that's exactly the terminology that Randy Hundley, who was a terrific catcher back in the 70s with the Cubs, had for Lieber. Just take a little off your slider and make it a changeup slider. There's another example of it as Anderson misses a ball that bounced in front of home plate for the second strikeout in the game. If you can't throw a curveball, just take a little speed off and get a little separation between those pitches, and it could be a very, very effective out pitch. And that one bounced well out in front of the plate, so you can tell how much Garrett was fooled on this pitch. No question, Chamberlain's two best pitches of the night were on those off speed breaking balls. Nice recovery by Cervelli, too, to keep Chipper from advancing. Casey Kochman popped out his first time. Yankees well off the line at third as he takes a shot that way. And that's into the seats for a quick swinging strike. Casey one for four in the series. Yankees play him. Pretty much straight away in the outfield. Gardner shaded slightly toward left in center field. Boy. Okay. And the ball misses high and evens the count. It's one of his best fastballs of the night, too. It's funny, he keeps putting his hand in the dirt to dry him off a little bit. I haven't seen him go to the rosin bag. Ground ball hit right to second. Cano to a knee. And the Braves, for the second time in this game, get a leadoff man on and leave him anchored at first base. Excellent pitching. Braves and Yankees still no score. Experience our new pillow top premium beds and the best in Southern hospitality. Jamison and you deserve a new deal. Still scoreless going to the fifth inning. If you just joined us, Kenshi Kawakami started the ball game and was perfect through three innings. But the last out he got was a very painful one off the bat of Jabba Chamberlain as he lined one off his neck that went over to Yunel Escobar, who recorded the out. As you see Kawakami able to walk off the mound under his own power but he had to come out of the game and Chris Medlin begins his second inning of work against Alex Rodriguez. Yankees are without a hit over the last seven offensive innings in this series. And now a rod buzzed by Medlin inside one ball and no strikes. Since his five for five game on May 25th. Right out a month ago, he's hit 171 with no multi hit games.
took a couple of days off in Miami because of exhaustion it was termed now back in for the second straight night here in Atlanta and now two balls and a strike good pitch not his best fastball just something that had a little tailing action on it to the outside corner to get a strike And good patience by a guy who's struggling there. That was a pretty good changeup. Here's where you find out what you're made of, Chip. This is a kid who hadn't pitched in 10 days. He's facing one of the all time home run hitters in the game. And you're three and two. What are you throwing? A fastball and Ray Rod grounds to deep short. Oh. How about that comeback? 13 in a row retired to start the game against New York. One out. Jammed him a little bit too. A little two seamer running in on him and he wasn't able to get his hands extended. And I, again, I go back to bat speed. That's just not what you're used to seeing from him, from Alex Rodriguez. That's usually one that he's. Sitting on his back foot a little bit, three and two, ready to launch. Robinson Cano flat out to left, his only time up so far tonight. And I guess with Kendlin, it's safe to say he doesn't have a blazing fastball. He has to pitch inside and keep guys honest, keep them off the plate. He started A Rod high and tight, missed inside to Cano here in this fifth inning. Goes in there again and gets a pop fly into shallow left. Two out. Nick Swisher, the batter. Earlier this year, I mean, at the very beginning of the season, there was talk about the Braves making a deal, you know, rumor about a deal with the Yankees involving Xavier Nady or this guy coming in to play the outfield for Atlanta. Nady's on the disabled list with a bad elbow, may not play the rest of the year. Don't know yet. Yeah, he's trying to come back now. He had a a plasma injection in his elbow to try to avoid Tommy John surgery. He's begun throwing. He's begun swinging the bat. It's still a ways away. And if there was interest in Swisher early in the year, his April numbers were outstanding for the Yankees. He was without question their best hitter. And kept them afloat. And now has a 1-1 count. And now 1-2. Well, as you can see, he can let it fly, and he's got some power both sides of the plate. He's got numbers similar to Nate McClough, each with 12 homers. Nate's got more RBIs, 44 to 36. Swisher switch hits, which makes him perhaps slightly more attractive to some from an offensive standpoint. And now a one two pitch downstairs to even the count that play right there from Brian McCann a seemingly innocuous play. Nobody on two outs you can see a catcher backhand that ball. Love to see him in the habit of sliding out and knocking it down like he just did there. Yeah he's gotten much better. On that play to his right. Not where he wanted that change up, but almost got away with it in terms of a strike. And try it again. And it worked. The Yankees have no hits in their last eight innings. They've been set down 15 in a row. The Braves are perfect against them so far, but still no score.
podcast is presented by authority of the Atlanta Braves and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves. Look at that line score on top. There hasn't been a single Yankee base run. As we head to the bottom of the fifth inning tonight, the lower third of the Braves order is coming up against an equally tough Jabba Chamberlain, who has given up two singles, had a double, and has left all three of those Braves hitters stranded so far tonight. Braves get their leadoff hitter on again. They may have to try to instigate something. His fifth of the year is first since June 2nd against Kevin Gregg of the Cubs. Grip it and rip it, kid. And that's what Fran Coor did. And the Braves have the lead. One to nothing tonight. As Fran Coor, it would appear, was not just watching but observing the game, saw what Chamberlain was doing last inning and went looking for a pitch and didn't miss it. Now a shot to short is handled by Derek Jeter. Jeff Francoeur had just one home run and 12 RBIs in his last 38 games. One and 12 in his last 38. This is a big one here to give the Braves a lead. And that one sailed in by a good distance. Eighth allowed by Chamberlain. Braves have scored first. As Chris Medlin bats. And looks at a. Laser high from Java Chamberlain. Then 0 4 7 so far in the bigs. Eighth home run allowed by Chamberlain on the year. The fourth by a right hander. Man, he smoked that ball. You can see him hit a slider like that. Chris isn't getting cheated, is he? No. And if he puts it in play, they better not half step throwing him out either. Because he can run. Uh oh. I don't like that. Kind of shaking that right arm like he hyperextended his elbow a little bit. That's his right elbow. On that page. Come on. I wonder if Chris even has one of those protective elbow pads that right handed pitchers use when they bat left handed. Needs one. Boy. There you go. He went around. Third strikeout for Chamberlain. I would say he got it himself extended out there pretty far. Umpires. If there's a benefit of the doubt, it's not going to go to a pitcher who checks his swing. No. Nate McLeod has a double in two trips tonight. It's funny what one run will do to you at this stage of the ball game too, when you're struggling like the Yankees are, and you don't have any, don't even have a base runner tonight. Even one Ready? run puts a little more on you. Sure, and where you look where they are in the game. As that one hammered down the right field line, little body English from McClough. Plenty of distance, but he pulled it foul. That just missed. He hit it over the top of the foul pole. Lean, lean 
need some more. Oh. If that was Boston, that would have been oh. right around the pesky Maybe. pole. Yeah, it would have. One ball, two strikes. But but the Yankees, this game's going to the top of the sixth inning. They don't have a hit yet. And the lower third of their order is due up. Man, it really gets serious for you because we talked at the start of our show tonight about how good the Braves' bullpen has been. Should Medlin have any trouble, I'm sure Bobby Cox would not hesitate to use those guys for three innings. No. Again tonight. No. Not to hang out over the plate. A very good purpose pitch from Chamberlain. And an off speed pitch slides in and strikes him out. Four strikeouts for Java Chamberlain. But Jeff Francourt jumped on one of those sliders and ripped it into the seats for a home run. Number five on the year and a one nothing Atlanta lead. and Red Sox at Turner Field. Tickets are still available at Braves.com slash tickets or by calling 1-800-745-3000. Obviously, these tickets will go fast, so get yours today. Tomorrow night, Derek Lowe against Andy Petiti. Some people say Pettit. Friday, Jurgens against Josh Beckett. Remember what Beckett did to the Braves up in Boston. Saturday, Vasquez against Tim Wakefield. Sunday, Tommy Hansen back out on the mound against Big Brad Penny. I try to forget what Beckett did. What did he do? Oy. Do we even want to go there? One of the best we've seen this year, that's for sure. Would it be fair to say that what Beckett did to the Braves is what the Braves are doing to the Yankees tonight? I think the Braves are doing them one better tonight. Yeah. Beckett at least gave up five hits. Look at that. Eight straight scoreless or hitless innings for the Yankees 23 straight scoreless for the Braves staff working into this sixth inning with Gardner Cervelli and then Java Chamberlain spot due. You've got to figure at some point the Yankees are going to break out. You just hope it's not tonight or tomorrow night. Let them get healthy against the Mets. That would be the most beneficial thing that could possibly happen for. That's where the Yankees go after this series. Three and all the count to Brett Gardner. Not only do the Yankees not have a hit, they don't have a base run. This is the last guy to get a hit. He was in the seventh inning last night. Don't want to walk him. Make him swing the bat. 
And trouble afoot because Gardner can really fly. 16 of 18 in stolen bases and represents the tying run in a one to nothing game. And Cervelli, the catcher, is coming up. Petiti, huh? Yes. Just checking. I mean, you think of it, he's from Louisiana, right? Yeah. I mean, that's Cajun country. Yeah. It's probably petite. I'll go with it. What? It? But he went with the Anglo pet. Yeah. Obviously trying to get everybody on his side. As the throw refers, nearly got him. Gardner had a good lead. Medlin with a quick move nearly picked him off. See what Joe Girardi does with Cervelli here. 16 games at Trenton. That's double A for the Yankees, where he hit a buck 90. He's hitting 288 in the major leagues. Tough league, that international league. Got, Got him! It. Joe Girardi will argue, as will Mick Kelleher. Gardner picked off. The first one was close, the second one got him. And Bill Welke hearing it from Joe Girardi. Joe Girardi talked today about how there's a lot of frustration when you're not swinging the bats well. There's got to be a lot of frustration on his shoulders, too, having to watch it. He's going to get thrown out. Yeah, I can't imagine he's going to make it through this, especially when he's saying that he could see from the dugout. That's what he wanted. Yeah. And a kick of the dirt, too. He wasn't going to leave until he got thrown out, and Bill Welke asked him, if that's what he wanted. It was an opportunity for the Yankee manager to vent some of his frustration. Huge lead for Gardner. And appeared to be safe. That's one thing Girardi could argue and he was safe. Did Medlin stop or does he have to stop as he begins to make that pickoff move? You want to leave? Okay. Now Bill gave him a lot of latitude there. So Cervelli hits with one out, and the first pitch to him is inside. All right, you're a Yankee player now. You've played on teams where your managers have gotten tossed, your team is struggling. What does that do to the guys on the bench now with Girardi kicked out of the game, arguing that call at first? Well, it. it they know that Joe Girardi's in the game, and they know that he's a tough boot, hard nose, and he doesn't have to do that to prove to them that he is. They just understand that he's in the same boat with them, that we got to get something going here, and we're not getting any breaks. That's a little high to Cervelli, two balls and a strike. So my question, though, is does a manager or a player getting kicked out have a measurable effect on a team? Yeah, it can. It can get a team going fire them up a little bit it certainly can uh, if you do it too often it kind of loses its effect but they know he's on their side uh, what was it you said last night that Mark Teixeira said he might be the best manager he's ever played for that's what Mark did say that's pretty Im impressive there having just played last year alone for Bobby Cox and Mike Sosha that's High praise. High towering fly ball left center field. Cervelli ties this game. Think he's jacked up. The first Yankee hit in the game leaves the park. And it's his first home run this season. And the first in his big league career. Breaking ball, not a whole lot unlike the one that Fran Coor hit out. And it took him about eight seconds to circle the bases.
And sometimes it only takes one play to awaken a sleeping giant. Let's hope that's not the case for Atlanta. New life for Java Chamberlain, a 1-1 score. And the Yankee fans start to roar. A looping line drive caught at second. Chamberlain's out number two. Especially when it comes from such an unlikely source, Chip. Yeah. And it wasn't one of your big guns or one of your leaders. It's a, a kid that they're they're high on, certainly. But what a thrill for him. And he pointed at Chamberlain as he was coming to home plate before he ever crossed the plate. He pointed to Chamberlain like, hey, we're even now. It's 1-1. One, one. That's for you. So how big is that pickoff play looking now? Mm -hmm. With the Braves getting one break. But Cervelli, after the Joe Girardi ejection, cracking one out to left center to tie it up. And a strike to Derek Jeter. He was the first man that Chris Medlin faced in the fourth inning after Kawakami left after being hit with a liner to the right side of his neck. A contusion was the official diagnosis. Brown to deep short. Jeter aboard. Braves had him played up the middle and Jeter pulled that ball out of reach. Like he got a fastball, he's coming back to him a little bit, made it a little easier to pull the ball. Keep your eye on him. 15 stolen bases for him, including one last night. And that was third base. Only 11 all last year, and already 15 this season. Johnny Damon's played Pepper with Jeff Francoeur twice tonight. Damon may be the one Yankee who has benefited most from that short porch in right field in the Bronx. Damon enters tonight's play already with 14 home runs. He's hit two fly balls to right tonight, and definitely one of them had a chance to have been a homer at their new yard. But don't pitch behind now. Don't don't pull in your horn. Stay aggressive if you're meddling. Braves will get their bullpen busy, but largely because he's behind in the count. On. Damon last year hit 17 home runs in 143 games. His career high is 24 set in 2006. He figures to fly right by that if he can stay healthy. After the pickoff, Jeter has decided not to employ such a big lead. Two balls and a strike. Little looper into shallow right center is going to drop. Jeter with a great read on that ball. First to third now. And boy, did Joe Girardi pick a perfect time to get kicked out of a game. The Yankees look like a different club offensively since his departure. One thing happened there. Even a 15-year veteran still does it. And that's Derek Jeter. As he was taking his lead, he looked out and scanned the outfield. You always want to know where the outfielders are playing. And when this ball was hit, naturally with two out, you're going to go in the crack of the bat anyway. But there was no hesitation on his part. He knew where McLeod was playing, knew that ball was going to drop, and an easy path for him to go first to third and then get beat up when he gets there. That part of it's pretty good. Yeah. Check him out. See him looking around and scanning the outfield, looking to see where everybody is before he ever left the base. That's, that's a guy that's been in the league 15 years, and he still does the little things that you got to do as a base runner to know what might happen or if something happens, what you're going to do. Watch the game, observe the game. And Jeter picks up 90 feet. And the importance of that play is if Medlin throws one in the dirt, McCann can't spear it, the Yankees would be able to 
steal a run. But now it sets up for Teixeira now. First and third. Tie game. Tech sold for two with a couple of strikeouts. And boy, has he been big with runners in scoring position and two outs. You drive in 56 runs when you hit 370. That's clutch. No balls and a strike. He's looking at his numbers left and right. Ton of at bats coming in. 188 left handed hitting 250. But 373 is his average right handed in 67 at bats. Either directly or indirectly, that ejection to answer your question kind of got the yeah. Yankees going, but I'd say the home run by Cervelli did more than anything. Especially the enthusiasm in which he ran the bases and was so excited. It's like a two liter soda bottle that you shake and you shake and you shake. It just builds up that pressure, and then as soon as you twist the cap off, what's it do? All the soda goes out. <laughs> Again, pitching behind in the count. Makes everybody a better hitter and makes really good hitters great hitters. And this guy doesn't need any help. Nope. He had a base open. And now he'll face Alex Rodriguez. With the bases loaded and a two out. And don't forget that this inning started with a walk to Gardner. And that's enough for Bobby. Bobby. He's going to bring in another right hander here to face A Rod. And it's Jeff Bennett. So Medlin goes two and two thirds innings. He allows the first three Yankee hits of the game. Chris struck out two. Chris walked two. And all three runners belong to him as he came on in relief of Kawakami with 10 games in between work out of the bullpen. Our call to the bullpen tonight brought to you by AT&T, your world delivered. Hall of Fame Museum, and we hope you're enjoying tonight's game. Now remember, tomorrow night is the final movie in the Peachtree TV screen on the Green Movie Series at Centennial Olympic Park. Now check it out. We don't want you to miss Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Sigourney Weaver in the Academy Award-nominated movie Ghostbusters. Make sure you bring the entire family and all your friends out for this free and fantastic movie. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, and we want you to be there. Remember, the Braves play right here on Peachtree TV. Yeah! That's right, Peachtree, baby! Woo! A 1 1 tie now here in the sixth inning. Base is loaded. Jeff Bennett got some encouragement. Check it out. Walking out of the bullpen, all the way out of the pen. Mike Gonzalez is talking to him and encouraging him. Bennett took the loss Sunday in Boston after giving up the home run to Nick Green. And he has walked in a couple of runs earlier this season. Lots of base runners for Bennett. 
No place to put a rod. Two outs. First pitch popped up foul. A rough ending for Atlanta on Sunday at Fenway Park in the horrible weather. Nick Green, a 303 foot home run. Very first pitch of the ninth for Bennett ended the game for Boston. Jeff trying to end this sixth inning and keep the game tied. 94 on his first fastball and got ahead 0 and 1. And your point, I think, is well worth repeating. It does not look like Alex Rodriguez can catch up to a good fastball right now. No, it doesn't. Whether it's hip related, I don't know. But it's not the quick, short swing that we're accustomed to seeing from him. That ball backed up and was fouled off Brian McCann, and A-Rod just does stay alive. The one thing you don't want to do here is throw something that speeds up his bat, meaning an off-speed pitch like a slider. That's right about the speed he's swinging. If you throw him a breaking ball, you better make sure you throw it off the plate and see if he chases it. Line drive on a slider. An 0-2 pitch will score two runs. First and third for the Yankees, and they have taken the lead. You got to question that pitch. And we did before it came. The one pitch he can hit is the off-speed delivery, and that's what he got. And it was off the plate. Well, whatever he hit, it was too good an 0-2 pitch. That's, that's the problem. It was going to be a pitch that he could handle. And on an 0-2 count, no reason to throw him a strike. So Jeter scores. Damon scores. Teixeira to third. Three runs across for the Yankees. 3-1 game. And that ball bounced just foul at third. He did that last night. Bounced one wide a third for a base hit. That came in the fifth inning. Here he is in the sixth with a chance to add to a 3-1 Yankee lead. All this began, remember, after a walk, a pickoff, and an ejection. A homer, a lineup, and four Yankees since have reached base. Again, 0 and 2. Ahead in the count. Don't have to throw him a strike. Ryan McCann wants this one in the dirt. Ground ball to second. Will retire the side. But a very profitable frame for the New York Yankees. After Joe Girardi got kicked out, Francisco Cervelli hits his first Major League home run, and he was pumped. Then A Rod on an 0 2 count drives home Jeter and Damon. And the Braves now trail the Yankees three to one.
Here are the recipients of the Big Smile Seat Upgrade, sponsored by Dr. Deborah Gray King and the Atlanta Center for Cosmetic Dentistry, the place in Atlanta to get a beautiful smile and right down on the field. And right now, the Yankee fans are smiling. They've come back to take a three to one lead. Big base hit from Alex Rodriguez. You know Escobar now to work against Jabba Chamberlain. Still working, work, looking, Joe, for that drop off from on, Jabba Chamberlain. And if velocity is any indication, there hasn't been any drop off yet. Well, he's going to be jacked up now. He's got the yeah. lead. His longest outing of the year is eight innings, but when his teammates fought back, giving the lead there in the sixth. You know he's gotten a, a little rest and he is pumped up. And there's a nice stab by A Rod to his right, and from his knees, scrambles to his feet and throws out Escobar for the first out of the sixth inning tonight. He even had the presence of mind to wipe his hand off before he threw the baseball. Hand hit the dirt, and then he wipes it on his pants and then throws him out. Pretty good. Chipper one for two with a single tonight. Come on, Chip. Come on, big guy. Come on. He's throwing that fastball with a two seam grip at times, Chip. And he, he's getting some late movement on it, running away from lefties. Get swings like that from guys like Chipper Jones and Brian McCann. That tells you all you need to know about his stuff tonight. And that was 94. That was the highest rating he's had tonight on Chip. Turner Field radar gun. Line past A Rod. And that brings the potential tying run to the plate in the form of. Braves catcher Brian McCann. I just don't get pitchers. I don't understand them. Maybe I should talk to Galima more because he was an old pitcher. Maybe I'd get a better feel for this, but you got one of the best hitters in the game up there and you got him one and two. Why do you throw him anything that he can reach? Why not throw that slider in the dirt? This is up and out away from him. I, I just don't I don't get it. Same point with Bennett on yeah. A-Rod. Let him extend his arms. So yeah. Doesn't... Thank you very much. I have the soapbox for a while. Sure, go. That's why I said we got a question either the pitch or the location with A Rod. And same scenario there. Chipper's too accomplished a hitter. You're not going to fool him too frequently. Now McCann down the strike, thinking about unloading here. And yeah, the Braves have their hot hitters up. As we take a look at who's on deck for the Braves, it's brought to you by Mercedes Benz, located on the web at MBUSA.com. A red hot Garrett Anderson would love a redeemer in this sixth inning. Double play is in order if Chamberlain can get a ground ball from McCann. Brian thinking about a gap shot with plenty of space between Gardner and Swisher, in center and right. That fastball he just threw, Brian, though, is not where Cervelli wanted it. He has a chat with Chamberlain because. They've gotten Brian to chase some breaking stuff today, so show him the fastball, but don't throw it down the middle where he can clock it. On three pitches, Brian McCann is struck out. I think there was our first fist pump tonight from Mr. Chamberlain, too. Something that Aubrey Huff of the Orioles imitated after he hit a home run off of him. Good breaking ball and See if there was the fist pump. No, just he was adjusting his cap, so that was my bad there. You strike out Brian McCann twice in a game, you should pump your fist. That doesn't happen too often. Here's Anderson. Two outs. And a fly ball to left center field that Gardner should catch. He does, and Jabba Chamberlain holds serve in the sixth inning. He's been given a 3-1 lead, and his bats will try to go to work in the top of the seventh inning.
else but the world of Coca-Cola Kajak is seven foot tall polar bear. Take home a free eight ounce glass bottle of Coke produced on site and taste over 60 different beverages from around the world. Make plans to visit the world of Coca-Cola today. Seventh inning already in Atlanta. Beautiful warm night at Turner Field and the Yankees trying to even up this series. And Swisher, Gardner and Cervelli are coming up. This might be the kind of game where afterward the Yankee players go up to the manager's office and say if they win it Joe we couldn't have done it with you. <laughs> He got kicked out in the sixth inning. Tony Pena figures to be the guy running the club right now while Joe is down in the tunnel. Yeah, you know, Joe is in the tunnel. And certainly Tony Pena has some managerial experience. Managed in Kansas City. One ball, no strikes. And that one's high. Our pitch speed this inning brought to you by AMPM. Too much good stuff. Line to left by Swisher. Anderson going back. Turns. And that one's off the top of the wall. And on a ricochet, leaves the park. You fall behind 2 0, you're going to pay. Talked about his. Aggressive swings and pop. How about some opposite field power? Jeff Bennett throws hard, but major league hitters have excellent timing. So the Yankees now 107 home runs as a team. And a bare hand, Escobar nabs Gardner. Good play, considering the speed of the Yankee center fielder, and that's the only way he could have gotten him. One out. Ball was coming up off the ground pretty hard too. He had to kind of come down on top of the ball and greet it to make sure he had it set firmly in his hand. Here's the guy that I think stirred them all up. Well, after Cervelli hit the home run. He ran the bases like they did in the old days. Put his head down and sprinted around the bags. Well, he was excited. They hadn't had a hit in eight innings. Their manager just got thrown out on a call that was questionable. And he hits a home run. And all of a sudden that dugout came to life. Largely because they tied the game, but also because of his excitement and enthusiasm for a ball club that's a very better a very veteran loaded ball club that doesn't show a lot of expression. Yelling and talking all the way around the bases. So we're the dead bat society no more, I would say, huh? At least for him. You said before the game, I'd like this guy. And you're right. What I like about him, too, is the stuff that we've been seeing between the innings with Jabba Chamberlain. I mean, Cervelli's a rather unaccomplished major league player. I mean, Jabba Chamberlain in New York. Is a budding star. And Cervelli, this entire game partner, has not been afraid to go up to Chamberlain and say, hey, do this, do that, let's go. I mean, he's really managed his pitcher, not only between the white lines, but after the inning's over. Kept him pumped up, that's for sure. Even after the home run to Frank Cor put him behind. Balls, two strikes. It just shows you how inexact scouting can be. This kid was hitting under 200 in double A. His average now knocking at 300. Well, let's see what he had done prior to that, though. In the minor leagues, his number is a 267 average, not too many homers. 
last year played at three different levels for the Yankees. And at Trenton, hit 315 in 73 at bats. That was the most he had at any one stop. And he draws a one out walk. And if you're a young catcher, I can't think of a team you'd rather play for than perhaps the Yankees with all the catching influence they have on this club. You've got Jose Molina, who's hurt right now, but a very accomplished defensive man. Jorge Posada, who's been around a long time. Tony Pena, the bench coach. And of course, Joe Girardi, the Yankee manager, who is just an excellent and intelligent receiver in his long major league career. Java Chamberlain lays down the butt. And Kotchman with the shot put to first on the sacrifice. Well, we bragged on the end of the bullpen and how good they've been, Chip. But this is a situation or a spot where there's going to have to be some improvement. The guys in the middle. Medlin's charged with three runs and now Bennett with just one, but Prior to the bunt of the five men Bennett had faced, three had reached. A two run single, a home run, and a walk. And the hits are going to happen. Again, it's the 0 2 pitch part of it that really stings. He's allowed runs in six of his last 11 appearances. Derek Jeter singled and scored, ran the base as well in that three run Yankee sixth. And looks at a ball high. I don't know your count. This is a spot Buddy Carlisle was used a lot in the last couple of years. And Buddy was getting hit around a little bit beginning of the season and no one knew why. The ball off in his fastball and then when he went on the disabled list it was discovered he had type 1 diabetes. And he's on the road to recovery and getting his diet and everything else squared away so he can return quickly. Chamberlain will have the lower portion of the Braves order up in the bottom half of this seventh. He leads the game four to one. As Jeter down to his last strike just a few minutes past the nine o'clock hour here in Atlanta. Game two of our three game set with the New York Yankees. Chased one upstairs he might chase another. But you don't have to throw a fat strike to get him out. And he didn't. Jeter went around and the side is retired. A leadoff home run from Nick Swisher. His 13th of the year. And that's a big run for the Yankees. They've scored four tonight and lead the game four to one. The Braves' upcoming schedule brought to you by Airtran Airways. Go. There's nothing stopping you. One more game with the Yankees tomorrow night. 
7 o'clock here on Peachtree. Good matchup. Derek Lowe against Andy Pettit. First game of the Red Sox series also on Peachtree. That's a 7.30 start. And that'll be Jurgens against Beckett. Big Fox on the national broadcast Saturday at 4 o'clock. 4.10 actual first pitch. And then Fox Sports South, John Shambi and I'll be back with you Sunday afternoon. And that'll be Tommy Hansen against Brad Penny. Now the great crowd at Turner Field tonight. Maybe a few more fans here than last night. We had over 40,000 here for game one of the series. I'd venture a guess there's significantly more. And let's hope Atlanta can do what that youngster's doing. I think he's got his base running monkey with him. Yeah. Good hustle, kid. If this were Anaheim, that would be known as the rally monkey. I understand, but that's base running. Yes. And it helps him. It, it balances him. And we don't need a rally monkey. We have a rally Holstein. Casey Kochman will lead things off. 4 1 game. There's a start. One ball, no strikes. Activity has begun in the New York bullpen. Now it's time to take a look at the Georgia Lottery scorecard brought to you by the Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. Casey is 0 for 2. Is that breaking ball? It's taking a little off. It's not the hard slider. And it's been very effective on the lefties tonight. Base hit by Casey Kochman. Pulled one through the hole on a one two pitch. Think you'll see a slider. Think so, at least not for a strike. A home run by Swisher, though. Very big run for the Yankees tonight. Yeah, you get one guy on in a two run game, one swing of the bat can tie it. Yeah, got to work a little harder here to even things up. Fastball right by him. Didn't get the slider by him in the fifth, though. Slider that started in the inside part of the plate broke out over the middle, and Jeff cracked his fifth homer of the year. So Jabba's in his book. Let's see if he can do it again. Down two strikes with a man aboard and nobody out. Getting late in Atlanta. 4 1 Yankees. Fall it off. Now don't get too. Smart. Don't outsmart yourself thinking you're going to get the slider and, and off the plate just because it's 0 2. You still got to respect his fastball. There's a big hole on the right side. If he does throw the slider and you've been looking for the fastball, there's time to adjust and go to right field with it if it's a strike. Popped up. Playable for Teixeira. That pitch had a wrinkle in it, didn't it? It did. One out. Chamberlain had a whole lot of pitches with which to work ahead in the count 0 and 2 didn't throw a strike and Jeff pops out with Kelly Johnson coming up with one on and one out Kelly still in the throes of a dreadful slump nine hits now in his last 67 at bats. Early in the count if he looks for that slow slider or Curveball, whatever it is, but he's taking some speed off. He might be able to jump on one. Lays down a bunt. Chamberlain with a bare hand has to hold. Hey. Bad throw pulled to Shara off the bag.
tying run to the plate. Going to score that an error on Chamberlain. Nice bunt by Kelly, bunting for a base hit. And a good throw probably does get him. A better angle on it here, but it definitely pulled Teixeira off the bag and allowed Kelly to reach. So two men on for the pinch hitter. Looks like he's going to be Prado. Dave Island, the pitching coach for the Yankees, out too. Talk to Java Chamberlain. Alfredo Aceves begins to loosen up in the Yankees bullpen. He's a big right hander. And it is Martin Prado. He's been very good pinch hitting this year. Three for eight. Field shades him toward right center. And Chamberlain pumps over a slider. Boy, he's had outstanding command of his secondary pitches tonight. Yeah, that was an excellent first pitch. Keep it going, Brett. Nice discipline by Prado. Wasn't the pitch he wanted to swing at? Didn't. Down only a strike. Boy, now it works even one ball and one strike. Martin's a tough out right now. Inside, outside, doesn't matter where you pitch it. He seems to get the barrel on the bat, the barrel on the ball, and hit it hard somewhere. Oh. Ball, two strikes. Same pitch as the first of his sequence. Uh, looked a little wide, but he got the call from James Hoy there. Gardner and Swisher throw pretty well. Damon does not throw well in left. Kochman, as you know, does not have much speed at second. So Brian Snipker will be in the crosshairs on a sharply hit ball up the middle or to right. Line, base hit, right field. Kochman got a slow break. They're going to wave him. Swisher loads up. And concedes the run. Prado a pinch hit. Four to two. Tough, tough out. Inside, outside, doesn't matter. They go away again. And he pings that one past Mark Teixeira, who is way off the line, and gets the run in. Martin with the bad legs and the bad groin is going to make way for the pinch runner Blanco. And the Braves really appreciate Nick Swisher just going to second who was trying to keep the double play in order and conceding the run. So Java Chamberlain departs six innings and a third. He allows seven hits two runs so far the men aboard belong to him as Phil Coke is it in the seventh inning for the Yankees.
And we hope you're enjoying tonight's game. Hey, starting Monday, June 29th, it's a party on Peachtree. Family Guy and House of Pain are moving. Everybody's favorite families are now back-to-back -back right here on Peachtree TV. First, starting at 7, it's a full hour of Family Guy. Then at 8, it's primetime pain with back-to-back -back episodes of House of Pain. 7 p.m., Family Guy. 8 p.m., House of Pain. It all starts Monday, June 29th, right here on Peachtree TV. All right, J.J., we're looking forward to that and looking forward to a continued comeback by the Braves in this seventh inning. Java Chamberlain departs. And the two runners on base are his responsibility as Tony Pena, the acting manager for the Yankees, sees Gregor Blanco as a pinch runner at first and Phil Koch, the lone lefty, on the mound in relief. Swing, fly ball, right field, pretty well hit, still going back at the wall, leaping catch by Swisher. That'll score a run as McLeod almost put the Braves on top. Wow. When Swisher got turned around, I thought it was going out of here, but Nate hit it to the deepest part of right field, right out by the bullpen gate. And there he got turned around, adjusted, and made a terrific play. And then an extra base hit. And how ironic, he caught it at the Coke Zero side. And he's given a sign to the rest of the outfielders to back up, play deep, nothing over your head. Keep that runner from first from scoring here with two out. Blanco has good speed. A gapper could bring him home if Escobar could provide it. What a game. Braves back in and right. down just a run. It's four to three. center field but not much depth to it. Gardner's got it measured up and Coke escapes further trouble. Nate McLeod almost put the Braves in front but Kochman, Johnson, Prado and Nate McLeod bring the Braves to within a single run as we head to the eighth inning at Turner Field tonight. with a couple of runs in the bottom of the seventh. It's four to three as we go to the eighth and time for tonight's Home Depot know-how question. It comes from Forbes Buck in Dunwoody, Georgia, who wants to know why don't the Yankees have names on their uniforms? And the answer I was always given Forbes was that we're the Yankees. We don't need names on our uniforms. Honestly, I mean, that dates back forever. And uh, if names start becoming fashionable, the owner, George Steinbrenner, said, We're not 
going to join that list. Well, the name on the front is much more important than the name on the back, yep. as the old saying is. But I think the Yankees were the first team that wore numbers. And yeah, they, they were. were. They were done in order of where the players hit in the batting order. So why did Babe Ruth wear number three? Babe Ruth hit third. And on and on you go with that Yankee attack. Eric O'Flaherty facing Johnny Damon, who's one for three in tonight's game. But the classic New York road uniform, the grays with the block letters, no names on the back, not nearly as elegant as their home pinstripes with the interlocking N and Y logo, which you see on their cap. That original insignia was designed by Tiffany's and was a medallion, a gold medallion that was given to policemen's widows. The policemen right? were killed in the line of duty. The Yankees adopted that. That's their logo. They've been known as the Highlanders, of course. And what is now this current Yankee franchise didn't begin in New York. They began in Baltimore and then moved shortly after their inception. A little high to Damon. Two balls, two strikes. O'Flaherty's first work since Sunday when he was ejected. We'll count to Johnny Damon. Three balls, two strikes. Meat of the order coming up. Don't want to put people on in front of Teixeira, Rodriguez, and company tonight. Round ball to first. Kochman to his right. Better hurry. O'Flaherty didn't get there, and Kochman didn't even break toward the bag. No, and Casey saw O'Flaherty slow getting over. He only had one choice. He had to go to the bag, and he didn't. There was only one thing he could do, and that's try to win the foot race. There's O'Flaherty getting over there late. Now, Casey's looking for him, but he's not there. Don't toss it now. It'll go as a base hit. Here's to Shara. He turns around and bats right handed now for New York. And to Shara, a much more deadly average hitter from the right side, hitting 373 as a right hand hitter, but not nearly as much power. Just four of his 20 home runs have come from this side. And there it is. To Shara drives a single to left. Had seven hits in the last three innings after going eight innings without a hit. Cervelli's home run opened the floodgates. Think A. Rattle Bunt? I don't think so. <laughs> Me either. One for three, a two run scoring single on an 0 2 pitch last time out that put the Yankees in front. They have yet to surrender the lead, but. They are threatening big time with two on and nobody out. That one gets away. That's as good as a bunt. That takes away the double play, and they're at second and third and a 1 0 count. Wild pitch. Brian played that one like a, an infielder on a short hop, it looked like. Let's see. Yeah. Wasn't able to go get over in front of it. Pitch wide of the target, too. Now they go ahead and walk Rodriguez intentionally. Bases are loaded and none are out. As Rodriguez to first for Robinson Cano, who's 0 4 3 in the game. Bullpen busy. Damon starts with an infield hit. O'Flaherty and Kochman couldn't retire him to share a single as a right hand batter. Now an intentional pass. Cano came into the game tonight hitting 304 against right handers. He's a left handed hitter, as you see, and 309 against lefties. Four of his 12 homers off left handed pitchers. 
Infield in. And a strike to Cano. If I'm uh, you know Escobar here, I think I got to play a little to my right. We've seen Cano kind of take an inside out swing on some pitches and bounce them, try to go to the left side. A little dribbler. Kochman's coming home. One. Throw to first. Hit him in the back. He's safe. Runner's going to come home and score. Might have been some interference. Bobby's Kelly can argue. Kelly Johnson's claiming the runner was in the baseline. And home plate umpire James Hoy says to Bobby Cox, I had a great look at it. And he said he was not out of the baseline. Damon was forced out at the plate. 3 2. Teixeira comes around and scores. A Rod all the way around 2 3rd. Cano at first on a fielder's choice. Give him an RBI. That's a tough break. It looked like the throw from Kochman pulled Bryan into foul territory, not giving him much of a line to throw to first base. But if the base runner's in fair territory, He's interfering. Bobby's asking for Hoy to ask for help from Welke. This has to be one of the most difficult calls for an umpire to make. Because the runner's lane is in foul ground and the first base bag is in fair ground. The age old argument if you're supposed to run in foul territory how do you hit the base that's in fair territory without getting in the way of the catcher's throw. That's why there ought to be a, another bag in foul ground like they have in softball or little league to take away the argument. Watch the throw from Kochman. He comes up quickly, but Brian has to come way over in foul territory. And no question about it, he was in fair territory when he was hit by the throw. Bobby's going to lose the argument. Cano. Well, very clearly. Look at where clearly. His, left, his left foot looked like it was on the grass. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. No question. They missed it. And the Braves breaks on umpires calls weighing heavily for the opponent in recent days. So instead of a double play. And runners maybe at second and third it's a force out of the plate that retires Damon to share scores a rod all the way around two third. Cano at first on a fielder's choice E two. And now Swisher hits. With one out, and that one almost skipped past McCann. So each team with an error in the game. Yeah, that was that's a tough break. Should have been a double play and a, and a dead ball. Now let's say this was a playoff game. Bottom of the ninth inning. Not going to review that play. Slowly hit ground ball. They're not going to get two on that. Swisher makes contact and brings home Rodriguez. Cano to second. Swisher's second RBI of the game. And it's now a six to three Yankee game. It's not a boundary call, so it's not reviewable. Yeah, and that would be an awful circumstance in a in a playoff game but you can see for yourself there that he was well inside the line Kelly Johnson could see it and he got hit before he got to the bag seems like that play crops up seven or eight times a year in the course of a major league season and it is the call I guess of the home plate umpire because the runner hasn't reached first base he's got to be the man that looks at the baseline because the first base umpire's responsibility is safer out at first right. But 
Boy, what a difference. If that had been a double play. The Swisher ground ball would have ended the inning. Now Gardner squibs one to second. Underhanded flip nearly. Not in time. But the Yankees strike for two more runs. The Braves could not get Damon. They miscommunicate there. A blown call and a throwing error helps the Yankees score two more insurance runs, and they've got a 6 3 advantage. Bobby Cox can sit and ponder tonight as the Braves came back to trail by one and Brian Bruni who has been brilliant for the Yankees before having some elbow problems now has come back and uh, has been a very big power arm to set up Mariano Rivera. Yeah he's a big guy throws hard and you got to try to do some damage against him before Rivera gets in there at least cut the lead again back down to one. I've got the rule for you on that play at first base after this pitch from Chipper or two Chipper. Rule 605K. The lines marking the three foot lane are part of that lane, and a batter runner is required to have both feet within that three foot lane or on the lines marking the lane. The batter runner is permitted to exit that three foot lane by means of a step stride reach or slide in the immediate vicinity of first base for the sole purpose of touching the base. But you can't run inside the line as Cano was doing. So it's kind of a, a vague rule. Vicinity of the base is somewhat yeah. vague but he's clearly 10 feet away from it. But meaning you can run down this lane until you get the general area of, a, of first base and then by steps or stride a step or stride you can hit the bag. Chip. Chipper stays alive. Oh, and to your count. So that call didn't go the Braves' way. Cost him two runs. As did the failure of Casey Kochman to run to the bag or O'Flaherty to get to the bag mm -hmm. or a combination thereof. Can't give these guys extra outs. Ninety-six. That fastball from Bruni, who is very deliberate in his windup, but as you can see, the way he pitches, why he's had some elbow trouble because he uses pretty much all arm, not a whole lot of body working in this. A former Arizona Diamondback is Bruni. He broke into the big leagues for the first time in 2004. Went three and four that year with the Diamondbacks. Has had right elbow inflammation. He's had a right elbow strain. 
He was the second Yankee pitcher last year with that Liz Frank injury, which is a bone chip that comes off with a tendon pull mm -hmm. last year. Chin Ming Wong had the same problem last season. And this year, more elbow trouble after a brilliant start for New York. The best chip in their bullpen ahead of Rivera. Now Chipper working the count. Three balls, two strikes. And there he was just trying to throw a strike, backed it off to 90. Tried to aim one and missed. Boy, come on, Chip. Middle of the order for Atlanta. Mariano Rivera, if the lead is three or less, will pitch the ninth. As great as he's been, he's not the same Mariano Rivera, so a run or two here would really be useful. Got to get that first guy on. Yeah. There's the Yankee great. And the 3-2 to Chipper is not even close. So after an 0-2 start, Rooney walks Chipper Jones in the eighth. Chipper on base for the third time in four trips. I think Brian McCann's asking about that base running play. Dave Island to the mound. Let's take another look at that play. Remember, we talked about Brian McCann having to come into foul territory to take that throw from Casey Kotsman. Where's James Hoy? See, he's kind of dodging the throw. He's looking at home plate. Still looking at home plate, watching the runner, watching the home plate runner. He never saw Robinson Cano running down the line. That was some good pickup there by the guys in the truck who found that. James Hoy wasn't even watching the play. And in fairness to him, he couldn't. He had to make sure that McCann held the plate to get that play called correctly. The force play at home. That's really a, a harmonic convergence of a nightmare for the umpires. Well, and thanks to Mike Pelkey for finding that for us, but he doesn't have to watch the plate after Brian McCann comes off the plate. That runner's out. He's not, he doesn't have to watch home plate to see if Damon was going to touch it. But I, I agree with you, but playing devil's advocate, by the time McCann makes that play and he points to the out, if you look at that replay, it looked then like the runner was within the vicinity of the first base back. Well, what I'm saying is once Brian caught that ball, he's either safe or out. And he can point at home plate all he wants, but he doesn't have to keep staring at it. Out. Okay, point, so, at, point at the plate, right. but now you've got a responsibility to watch the play at first, and he did not. That's true. I agree with you there. You don't have to continue to stare at home plate after that. you got other responsibilities, and James Hoy missed out, and our truck guys in the truck found it. Thank you. Good work. Good. Rip McCann to even the count. Two balls and two strikes. It'd be interesting to hear what his reasoning was to Bobby Cox about why Cano was not called out. And tomorrow we'll be able to get further explanation. Perhaps Rich Reeker. Major League Baseball umpire supervisor as part of his due diligence. They monitor the crews series by series. He is in town. Maybe we can get Rich tomorrow to explain what the umpires saw. And don't know if there'll be a pool like reporter down there to ask the question of Boy and the crew what they saw tonight. Certainly Bobby will tell us what he was told. And if we get a chance to ask Rich, we'll do that for you. Meanwhile, it's six to three. There's no going back now, so you got to have some good at bats. Chipper had a good one, and Brian's fighting here. Wind is blowing toward that right field corner. That's an inviting sign for the Braves. 2 2 count. Tipped and caught. McCann strikes out for the third time in this game. I don't know if that's happened all year. Maybe I don't help either. Check. We got about 20 all season long. High fastball. Guy throwing 96. Hard to catch up to. Well, he's thinking home run. 
Now Anderson will bat 0 for 3. His five game hit streak is on the line tonight. Garrett wind to the center field fence in the second inning off Java Chamberlain. And we know from how hot Garrett's been the last month, he can hit anybody's high fastball. He certainly can. Might be Bruni's worst nightmare right here. Anderson 0-2. It is the first time this year that Brian McCann has struck out three times. He only had 24 all year coming in. That's 24 hours after Jorge Posada struck out four times for the Yankees. So the catchers have been pitched awfully tough in this series. Now we'll see what Garrett can do with two strikes. Phillies are losing tonight. The Mets are winning tonight. Yeah, the poor Mets in their lineup. They really are struggling, aren't they? Yeah, 11 nothing over the Cardinals tonight. Nick Evans back from the minor leagues is homered for the first time this season. Anderson checked a swing. Braves, by the way, signed a veteran infielder that's a Gwinnett now, Chris Burke. The Braves fans will remember back in. 2005, knocking them out of the playoffs with an extra inning I'll home bet run. You didn't know if his middle name was Bleeping. This Bleeping Burke. Yes, <laughs> that's what he's known as around here. Uh -huh. That's what the Red Sox always call Bucky Dent after his heroics at Fenway Park. One ball, two strikes. And now Cervelli wants to talk it over. Nobody at second base. It's not a sign problem here. It is an agreement on a pitch. And as you replied last night, the pitcher has a line out of veto. He does. Rolled to the right side. The Yankees will concede. Chipper Jones reaching second as Teixeira handles. And that's the second out of this eighth inning. And Casey Kochman. So it looks like Anderson's five game hit streak will Grind to a halt, barring a big comeback in the eighth and ninth for Atlanta. Kochman one for three with a run. Oh Need another base runner for Frank Coeur to come up. Representing the tying run. Two, two balls, no strikes. That one finds the zone. Two balls and one strike. Not the best slider he's thrown. It's not a big breaking slider. A little bit of a spin between a, a cutter and a slider. Manny Acosta was loosening up. He was scheduled to come in in the ninth inning, and he's still warming up. But he's joined now by Rafael Soriano. 
I guess in case the Braves somehow tie it up here. Rooney and Cervelli. Brief boys. One's been on the DL and one was in the minor leagues. We'll cut him some slack. More meetings than the UN Security Council here in the eighth inning. There's Acosta and Soriano. And thankfully, Soriano's just playing a little catch. He's been working a lot. Dave Island, the pitching coach for the Yankees, pacing in that dugout. As you see, Mariano Rivera. Getting ready for the ninth, and the tying run comes to the plate inexplicably. A leadoff walk, a strikeout, and a rollout. Kochman aboard. And let's see if Jeff Francoeur can run into one. Here's the home run by Francoeur off Chamberlain back in the fifth inning. effect of all these walks is you start to turn that lineup over and get your top hitters lurking in the ninth against Rivera. He challenged him with a fastball and beat him. No balls and a strike. 95 and it was up to catch up to. Outfield very deep. He was 0-2 on Chipper and walked him. Maybe 0-2 to Frank Coor, hoping not to repeat that. He'll make a mistake trying to throw too good a pitch. That's the pitch that when Jeff's really, really fishing and wishing, misses. He looked that one off the plate. And Bruni now has a one two count. I think Bruni's getting a little fed up with Mr. Cervelli too. Cervelli gives him shrugs his shoulders throws his hands in the air after about every pitch and I think Bruni's a little tired of it. Just get back there and call pitches and I'll do my best. What well, guy hits a home run he thinks he runs the place. Popped up foul out of play. Well, there might be a little something to that because Bruni's had enough. Last pitch was a slider that missed outside, and I don't know if the, he crossed him up or not, but Cervelli gave him a lot of hand gestures and shrugging the shoulders, and Bruni was tired of watching it. That even put down a sign. One ball, two strikes. Boy, come on, Jeff. From low and two to two and two. Not throwing that slider for a strike to right handers. Having a hard time there. Gives him a sign now with two aboard. Dangerous pitch. Boy, do you see how far A Rod is off the third baseline? And another battery mate meeting. This one was inside. Stayed out of the plate. That's not a whole lot unlike the slider that he hit out of the ballpark, but because he's trying to guard the plate, it's a little different approach, different swing. And Jeff just pulled it foul. Their outfield, as you said, very deep to try to cut off any extra base hit. The guy, the only guy they're worried about is Jeff. They don't want to let Kochman score from first, but Jeff represents the tying run. Hit up the middle. That'll bring home Chipper with the outfield deep. Six to four game. Go ahead, run to the plate. And a nice at bat from Frame Coor down two strikes to rifle an RBI up the middle. Indeed, it was. Excellent at bat. Fastball up. He got on top of that one. Boy, that was good to see. He stayed on top of that fastball and banged it back through the middle. Tony Pena on his way to the infield mound. 
And he will take the ball from Brian Bruni, who walked two and gave up a hit and a run. Look how Jeff gets on top of this high fastball. Squared it up, head down on it, right back through the middle. Good piece of hitting, terrific at bat. Braves are back in the game. Six to four, your score on an RBI hit from Jeff Rancourt. Six to four in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two on and two out. And acting manager Tony Pena is doing something only done once before this year with future Hall of Fame closer Mariano Rivera. That is bring him on for a save of greater than one inning this year. Fifteen out of sixteen in saves. Showing of his age a little bit and that he is human. He's given up 27 hits in 27 innings, including five homers. But you see, there are three walks to 33 strikeouts. That's nothing new. 497 lifetime saves for Rivera. That's more than any other American League pitcher in history. Second most all time behind Trevor Hoffman's 570. And 31 of 32 in Italy play, including 12 in a row. Five homers he's allowed the most since 2001. Trailing only Trevor Hoffman in the save category. His bread and butter pitch is a cutter in on lefty's hands. Strike one to Kelly Johnson. Mariano had some shoulder surgery in the offseason, cleaned up the shoulder joint. His velocity has been slow to come back. Ins and outs you to death. Lefties hitting 220, righties 275. Got a generous call there. It's Yankees all. outfield has come in a lot more shallow than they were. They'd like to cut off that run at second because again, Pachman slow a foot at second. 0 and 2 to count. That went a little too far off the plate. Mariano's a Hall of Famer, but was closer to Cooperstown than it was the strike zone. It's not a whole lot wider than the one before. So those are even. Counts not. One and two. Slider. Wicked pitch in on the hands. And Mariano Rivera strikes out Kelly Johnson. The Braves, though, get a leadoff walk, cash that in. And the big boppers could come up in the ninth inning. It's a six to four Yankee lead.
the ninth inning. This game started great for Atlanta. Ginchin Kawakami had set down eight in a row, and then this line drive off the bat of the pitcher, Java Chamberlain, hit him in the neck. Up high on the neck, ricocheted over to Escobar, who threw out Chamberlain, but Kawakami had to come out of the game, able to walk off under his own power, diagnosed with a contusion of the upper neck, but had set down the first nine in a row before he had to leave. And hopefully, Kinshin would be able to make his next start. Double switch for Atlanta. Diaz into the game, hitting ninth. Manny Acosta is on. He will bat in Jeff Francoeur's spot. In the Braves batting order, so the Atlanta defense has Anderson in left, McLeod in center, and Diaz in right, and Manny Acosta, last appearance pitched June 14th at Baltimore. He's been sick, Chip. He's had a respiratory flu type thing that's really waylaid him. But feeling better now. Francisco Cervelli greets him first. And that one. Got everybody in the catcher's gear behind the plate and can. And the umpire, James Hoy. Strike one to Cervelli, one for two with his first big league home run. That followed a Joe Girardi ejection in the sixth. And the Yankees finally awakened from their eight inning and one third offensive slumber in this series. They didn't have a hit over that stretch. Chris Medlin had walked the leadoff batter Gardner, then picked him off, and then right after that, this was a game tire from Cervelli, his first major league homer. And then an out later, two singles, a walk, and another single produced a couple more runs. A Rod's bases loaded single, drove in two. That hurt, as did the disputed runner in the baseline call that ended up costing the Braves two runs. And if my Georgia math is right, I think the Yankees do lead by two. They do indeed. Florida won again tonight. They're playing well. 5 2. They beat Baltimore. And those Marlins. Are now. 37 and 36. They've won four in a row and eight of 11. And with Phillies losing, they're two out of first. Remember, they started the year 11 and one did the fish. Then went into a terrible tailspin. Some might say the fish went in the tank. Uh, they might. Some might. But Ricky Nolasco started for them, and after his stint in the minor leagues, he's come back and has been a different guy for them. He went for his fourth win tonight. Let's see if he got it. Round ball to short. Cervelli on a three to pitch is the first out at the top of the ninth. It was Ricky Nolasco beating Birkin of the Orioles. Dan Meyer, the former Brave, his first save tonight. Marlins had to put Matt Lindstrom on the disabled list, by the way, after he blew a save last night. How's Birkenstock? Very good. Up or down? That would be G. That was very G. Despite the fact that he lost. One ball, no strikes. To Melky Cabrera. He never hits a corked bat. No. But he can strap it on you sometimes. He's got his fastball working. Cabrera to left center field. Garrett Anderson can't get there. And that's all the way up against the wall. Melky Cabrera stops at second. A one out double. Takes that ball out away from him into the gap and too far for Nate McLeod to run to try to catch it. A 
interesting that Matt Diaz came on to play right instead of left defensively on the double switch. But if the Braves in the ninth inning can get the lineup down to the left hand portion of their lineup against Rivera that cut fastball might be something that Anderson can handle but Braves got to send five to the plate before it gets to him and now Jeter with a fly ball can bring home Cabrera on a wild pitch. Boy, wild pitches have played a part in this tonight, yep. too. The wild pitch in the eighth inning by O'Flaherty moved the runners up that caused a an intentional walk to A-Rod. Brian McCann did about everything he could there. He had it bounce off every piece of his equipment. Infield has to come in for Jeter. Boy, that opens up a lot of hitting angles. One year count now. Mays beat the Phillies 7 1. Matt Garza beat Joe Blanton. Pat Burrow, the former Philly, hit his second home run for Tampa Bay tonight. I told you the Mets are all over the Cardinals in the lone National League game. That's now an 11 0 final. Fernando Nieve, who hasn't pitched in the major leagues for a couple of years, has won his first three starts in a Met uniform. Nick Evans also hit a home run. Just four hits for the Redbirds tonight at City Field. Didn't get the corner. Three and one. Red Sox were winners tonight. Six four over the Nationals. John Lester. Victorious, so the Yankees need to win this one to stay five back in the AL East. Ground ball to short. They're coming home. Escobar, a perfect throw. And on contact, Cabrera is erased. play by the Yankees going on contact momentum going forward and as the ball was hit Cabrera didn't hesitate but he is a dead duck at the plate Brian able to keep him from getting on the plate actually foot slid right to the side of it so Jeter can't bring home an insurance run Braves in the ninth will have Diaz, McLeod, Escobar, and then if anyone gets on, Chipper Jones, which could be a classic future Hall of Fame type rivalry in the bottom of the ninth inning. Runners going. Pitch a ball, the throw also off target and into center field. Cheater now 90 feet away with two outs. Boy, he's been spry afoot, hasn't he? That's 16 stolen bases for Derek Jeter. I have to say the defense for the Braves has been less than inspiring here in the last couple of innings. Chip, I'm not sure why Escobar wasn't able to catch that ball to keep it from going into center field. It'll be charged as an error to Brian, but shouldn't have been. Wasn't that bad a throw? Wasn't that far off the mark? Jeter stole just 11 bases all last year, stole 15 bags two years ago. He's up to 16 now, and it's not July yet. You now goes racing to the back of the bag and it hits right off of Jeter's back. If it hit off his back and he's sliding in the baseline, that's kind of on the mark. Instead of going behind the runner, come up in front of him to keep it hit from hitting him. Fly ball, shallow center, big hit Johnny Damon. You talk about manufacturing a run. A three hit night for Johnny Damon who couldn't start last night because of a bad calf. A blue hit brings home Jeter and Atlanta's defense costs him in the night. He's got 41 RBIs now. Taking a chance sending the runner caused a defensive lapse and produced a run. Seven for New York seven runs on nine hits.
Sankey scored three in the sixth, one in the seventh, two in the eighth, one in the ninth. After not picking up their first hit until one man out in the sixth inning. Braves are charged with two errors tonight, both to Brian McCann, and neither one of them is really legit. One was charged on the throw to first that hit Cano, and the other one on the throw to second that should have been caught. Gapper right center field. Damon around second on his way to third. Diaz cuts it off. Damon around. Throw off balance from Escobar. Not in time. 8-4 Yankees. RBI double Mark Teixeira. Fifty seventh RBI for Mark went out around a pitch out away from him. Diaz had a long way to go, but it's match throw in that causes a leap from Escobar and then having to try and throw off balance at no shot to get Damon. And the tail of the bullpen for the Braves in this series can be summed up thusly. Moylan, Soriano, and Gonzalez for brilliantly last night. Anyone not named Moylan, Soriano, and Gonzalez has pitched tonight, and each of those men has been touched for at least one run. Two balls, no strikes. Now have his game would have progressed had Kawakami not gotten hurt. But Medlin three runs, Bennett a run, O'Flaherty two runs, Acosta two here in the ninth allowed. On. And this Yankee club, which had scored only 13 runs in their previous six games, has picked up eight runs in the last four innings tonight. on balls puts a rod on five walks from the Braves relief court tonight and this is Manny Acosta's game again he hasn't pitched in 10 days he has been under the weather as Joe said and Roger McDowell out for a chat with him now and even with 24 pitches he's got to be a little weak Especially his legs. Robinson Cano, his was the key at bat in that. Eighth inning debacle. Little fielder's choice. Kochman to the plate. McCann's return throw hit him. It appeared on our replays like Cano was inside the baseline. Or, if you will, out of the baseline. Turning point of the ball game, yep. really. Instead of uh, a double play and runners in scoring position, get one out, two runs came across. Four to three game at this point, but obvious interference here with a runner running inside the baseline. Kelly Johnson saw it all the way, but the home plate umpire wasn't watching. And now it's three and zero. Oh. Mike Pelkey in the truck is the guy that picked this one up. Watch James Hoy right here. Watch the play at the plate. He's never looking at first base to watch the runner be hit by the throw. It's 
his call. Three balls and a strike. Now the bases are loaded, and again, playing devil's advocate, the call, first responsibility of the plate umpire is safer out at the plate. Does McCann hold the bat, hold the plate? And he did. And your point, and it's worth repeating, Hoy really emphasized the call, pointed at the plate and looked at the plate instead of immediately turning his attention to see the charging base runner to first base. Exactly. He, right? There's no reason to watch the base right. runner after that. So look at here, Mariano Rivera, his second career at bat. With the bases loaded and two out. And one Yankee pitcher has already put a hurting on Atlanta tonight. It was Jabba Chamberlain's comebacker that knocked Kawakami out of the game. Fly ball, center field, pretty well hit. Good grief. Mariano Rivera almost got a hit off Panama's Manny Acosta. How about that? 8-4, we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Mariano Rivera. Boy, it's been a frustrating game tonight for Atlanta's offense, Pards. The Braves led 1 0 on that fifth inning Jeff Francoeur home run. Yankees scored three, then one. Braves come back with two. Yankees score two. Atlanta scores one. There just hasn't been that shutdown inning that would allow the Atlanta offense to catch up, tie it, or take the lead tonight late. No, and it's uh, the frustrating part is really not the offense tonight. Four runs on eight hits. Had the lead briefly one to nothing. It's just been the lack of execution defensively and I'm not even talking about the the play that the umpires missed. I'm talking about a couple of others that have gone awry tonight and have cost the Braves a bunch of runs. So Matty Diaz will start things off for Rivera. Remember he did come on in a save situation in the eighth inning. What makes uh, our game so fun? You can save it, win it, or lose it in the eighth just as easily as you can the ninth. And Tony Pena brought on Mariano with trouble afoot for the Yankee ball club. Rivera struck out Kelly Johnson on four pitches. As Kelly represented the then go ahead run, I believe. Yes. And now Rivera with a four run lead. Goes to work on Diaz. One ball, two strikes. Diaz 0 for 1 in his career against him. Casey Kochman's 3 for 5. Garrett Anderson 3 for 18 from their work in the American League. One out. His, his cutter, I mean, it looks like a slider. 
but it's just a fastball that moves a couple of inches and it breaks hard to the in this case the outside part of the plate. And that's what ate Kelly up last inning. After he got ahead of him 0 and 2 and that sounds so. Harmless Oh, his ball moves just an inch or two. Yeah means a, a ton does it not for. You to barrel it up or trademark it. Yeah it's just a. A rare occasion a very. Gifted guy. With a great pitch. That's made him a Hall of Famer. There it is again. Well, the Phillies lost tonight. Mets won Florida won tonight. So Braves will remain four back, but the Mets will be a game and a half back. The Marlins will be two back in a suddenly tightening Eastern Division race. If form holds here, we'll see another cutter in on his hands. And you just, for whatever reason, hitters just can't lay off that pitch. Well, it looks like a fastball that's coming down the inner third of the plate. In this case, it was a little up and in, but it's something looks like it's on the inner third of the plate and then moves in this direction and just tightens up your hands. You have to pull your hands into your body. You can't get the barrel around. And that's where he's made his living. So Escobar bats with two outs, bases clear. Yankees one out away from evening the series. And that one well off the plate. Escobar tonight, 0 for 4. He's 2 for 8 in the series. His four game hit streak on the line. And this at bat against Mariano Rivera. And that's an example of a cutter to the right hand hitter. Thirty nine years old he'll be forty in November. And I believe the last remaining player wearing forty two. Mm -hmm. Baseball retired number forty two in honor of Jackie Robinson but Mariano Rivera grandfathered in. And he's one strike away from a four out four strikeout save. Some guys can throw what's called a natural slider. The ball just comes out of their hand and has kind of a, in his case, a right to left movement on it that's just natural when you play catch with him. And that's kind of what his looks like, although he's making it do it. Setting that ball up like he was going to throw a four seamer. And yeah, he cut that one loose. That was 93. It's the hardest pitch he's thrown. Yankees trying to be the fourth of the top four Eastern teams to win tonight. And they did. Mariano Rivera strikes out all four Atlanta Braves. He was assigned tonight. And the New York Yankees cash in a couple of Atlanta mistakes. And it's the 109th save of more than one inning for Mariano Rivera and